Hi and welcome back to another video, again a follow up video regarding the 7900XTX hotspot drama because we have an official statement from AMD and not in written form as you would expect it from the previous statements but Gordon from PC World sending out the best regards to you to CES. He met Scott Herkelman who is the senior vice president and general manager of the graphics business unit. That's a very long title. He met him at the AMD booth at CES and Scott was asked by Gordon about this entire topic. And first of all, I have a huge amount of respect to Scott who was willing to give a statement to the public over a video in an interview by Gordon, which definitely takes some balls to do that. I'm not sure if I would do that in a position as AMD because it can be quite critical as we can see analyzing the statement, going through some of his points, because honestly, as much I, as I respect it, I just cannot agree to it. Because there are several things inside that leave a lot of open questions to me. And regarding the entire thing, I think we cannot get away AMD that easily. First of all, Scott is answering the question regarding when did AMD hear about the entire issue for the first time. Uh, on December 20th, uh, Andres Schilling from Hardware Lux, hi Andres, tweeted at me saying, hey, we're seeing this weird temperature anomalies on boards that we make. So not our partners, and it was specifically XTX on made by AMD graphics cards. Uh, we immediately sprung into action. For the last couple weeks, all we've been doing is focused on what's going on here. So as confirmed, he heard about the first time from Andre Schilling, which is an editor at Hardware Lux. And I think that's totally plausible. I also don't agree on the speculation that AMD heard about this thing prior to release. It just doesn't make sense. AMD certainly would not release a defective product to the market. They know for sure that it has a huge amount of potential for this kind of backlash, like PR backlash. And I'm quite sure that AMD did not know about this before because that's some speculation some people had, but I think this sounds totally plausible. And we had three things to look at. One is, uh, was there a safety concern? There's not a safety concern. We were able to root cause that. Uh, is there a performance uh, potential issue? And what we found is if you throttle at 110 degrees in certain workloads, you would see a small performance delta. So Scott calls it a very tiny performance delta, performance penalty, which I don't really agree with. Because at least three out of four out of my testing cards were showing that they could only dissipate a heat of about 250 to 260 watt constantly, which is lacking about 70 to 80 watt of power. And to give you an idea of the performance penalty, I saw a lower performance by 10 to 20%, which is lower than a 6900 XT. And certainly you would not want to have your 7900 XTX to perform lower than the previous gen high-end card, especially if you paid 1,300 euro for it. And so then we said, okay, we should root cause this. Then what is going on? And it all comes down to a small batch of our vapor chambers actually have um, an issue, not enough water, and it's a very small percentage. And so we said, okay, that's the root cause. But it seems like it's not only the risk of a tiny performance delta or performance penalty. Because at least after my previous video, I received two confirmed cases of cards that were dying cards that were also affected by the hotspot thing. Now you have to take this with a grain of salt because you don't know if both things are in correlation or not. It could be that the card was defective anyway. We will get to this card at the end of the video because I actually purchased this of the viewer. But I also want to be very sensitive about this topic. I don't want to see headlines that are like hotspot vapor chamber drama now kills cards because that's that's far from being confirmed that's why i just don't want to see any kind of quotations like this out there we have to really be sensitive about this thing because there's always a high risk of like potential pr damage to amd and you have to be sensitive to this to make sure that if you release any kind of data it has to be accurate or not so according to Scott, it's just a small percentage which is confirmed and affected by not having enough liquid inside the vapor chamber and thus leading to high temperatures in the cooling result. But it seems to be that the like handling of this or the result, how they handle this, seems to be not satisfying. But let's just check with the statement. A lot of the internet was debunking it for us and that's why I'm here talking to you, which is, hey, we've identified this. 
You spend a lot of money if you bought this XTX made by AMD. We want to fix it for you. We have the fix. We're, re we're ready to send it to you. Just call our tech support line if you bought it from AMD.com or if you bought it from one of our AIB partners, call them. They have units. We know how to, uh, we know how to make okay. sure and identify that they're good and we'll ship it to you right away because we want you to have a great product. Now, if you believe, Scott, that AMD knows only a small percentage and a single batch is affected by this, then they should know for a fact which serial numbers are affected and also that's also something Igor pointed out, that if you check out the cooler from underneath, there is a QR code, pretty much a serial number of the vapor chamber. So you could track back which cards are affected. And that leads me to why are you not contacting your distributors, your partners, to tell them which are the affected serial numbers to recall these affected cards. Instead, you are relying on customers who spend 1,300 euro to do their own testing to figure out if their card is affected. They might even be customers, they have no idea about a card, they may buy a pre-build. And you're waiting for them to return it while you know that these are defected units? That's, that's not a very nice way. And so there are two things how you could take this. Either AMD just doesn't care about their customers, which is not nice considering how much you pay for this card, or it's not true and more than a single batch is affected and they maybe have no idea which are the exact batches that are affected. So they're waiting for the customers to return the units so they can actually figure out how many are affected. So it's one of both, but none of these are a good scenario. Continuing with the statement, Scott is stating this regarding how you should act with the refund or replacement. We know how to, uh, we know how to make okay. sure and identify that they're good and we'll ship it to you right away because we want you to have a great product and uh, we want you to be confident in that product when you use it. Now I can just again refer to things you can find in public on Reddit, on Computerbase, on Hardware Lux. Also again, nice poll on Computerbase. They tried to figure out how many people will get a replacement right away from AMD and only a third was able to get a replacement right away or will get a replacement within the first two weeks. According to AMD customer support, two thirds of affected users that contacted the AMD customer support, at least from the German community, we're told that there are no replacements for them yet, at least within the next two weeks. So it doesn't seem that easy that we will ship it to you right away. Doesn't seem to be that simple, but also to be fair, the AMD customer support also offered to send a refund to these customers, which is what I would personally recommend to do. And then just, just buy any other 7900 XTX, which is non-MBA design. There are so many cards available, at least in Germany. It doesn't matter if it's like a PowerColor XFX and Asus and MSI, I don't know. There are plenty of cards you can get, which will definitely not be affected. But now to get back to my defective 7900 XTX, which I bought off from one viewer. And we want to find out why this card is broken. We will try to do some measurements, see if maybe the VRM is broken, defective, or the memory, or the GPU. But I also want to raise a bit of awareness that when it comes to these kind of drama things, it is very easy to jump on the train and say that the defective vapor chamber killed this card and this card is now broken. It is possible, but I also want to point out that we will not be able to find out if this was the case or not. And even though if I have two confirmed cases, it could also just be coincidence that these cards would have died anyway. You just don't know. And in these kind of situations when like drama is building up, you always have to think about, like you always have to be careful what you're doing with this kind of information. I could just stand here and make a huge amount of drama out of this and uh, saying that it's, it's killing the card, but you won't know. And it's the same if somebody posts on Reddit and says he had the hotspot problem and his card is now dead. There is like no direct correlation or at least you cannot figure out if there was a direct correlation or not. And I want to, to raise a bit of awareness with this part of the video, how to work with this kind of information if you receive it during such a like, sensitive topic. But before we start, we obviously also want to check like how does the card behave? What's actually going on with this card? Oh shit. Um. Oof, uh, okay. Um, okay, so that's actually not what I expected. Wow, so this, <laughs> this card just, um, it just died. That was interesting. Um, doesn't smell very, very nice. I will have to, to open the window for a second. Be right back.
Okay, so that was maybe stupid. You can let me know about this, but so there are two aspects how you can start approaching a thing like this. First of all, there is always the risk that the user did a mistake and the card is not actually defective. And before ruining the stock state, I wanted to double check if the card is actually broken. And because it could always be that something was wrong with this rig and the card is actually not defective. And there is always only just one chance to test the stock condition with the cooler mounted and everything. So yeah, but on the other hand, if you know that something is broken, then you can measure and maybe avoid additional damage. So yeah, okay, let's open it up. So even uh, like 10 minutes later and I still have the window, window open. So forgive me if there's any kind of background noise, but yeah, it's, it's the typical like electronics diet smell, which is a very terrible smell. So first look, this area here looks a bit odd, apart from that, kind of normal. So there's already a nice mark left on the thermal pad underneath the VRM. And if we now look at the card, it looks okay on the first look, but check out the area right here. So you can see this yellowish area right here. And like on this area, there seems to be like a, like a hole inside the PCB right next to this power stage right here that also uh, is definitely blown up. So yeah, it, it could be like a short inside a PCB, which is very unlikely because it worked for several hours. But yeah, this MOSFET right here just blew up and that's where all the smoke came from. Now to check the internal GPU resistance with our milliohm meter, you can find about 90 milliohms for the GPU internal resistance. Whereas if we are checking ground to ground, then that's like 10 to 15 milliohm. So that leaves us with about 75 milliohm. Let's check with a working card as a reference. And now double checking with the working card, also around 90 milliohms. Seems like the GPU didn't suffer any kind of damage, at least from the quick debugging we can do with the internal resistance. Also to double check on the memory, seems like about 55 ohms internal resistance, so no short on the memory as well. Seems like a simple VRM damage. Even though I expected this video to be a bit different, that it didn't blow up live on camera, it is still a perfect example of what I meant earlier. That if you have this kind of limited information and now just think of somebody posting exactly this information on Reddit. He tested his card, it reached 110 degrees Celsius hotspot and it blew up. You would probably think that the 110 degrees Celsius hotspot thing also killed his card. Whereas in this example, I'm pretty sure no matter what kind of cooler would you would have placed on the GPU, it would have died anyway. And that's exactly what I mean. You have to be careful with this kind of, kind of information. You have to be fair with this kind of information because there is always potential PR damage that should not happen at least with this specific example. And to be fair, that's also like being fair is a very good point because I would expect AMD to be also be fair to their customers. So you have customers buying from your website AMD and you claim that you identified the issue. You know which batch is affected. So you know which serial number is affected. How hard can it be to directly contact your customer who bought off your website, your most expensive graphics card, like consumer card, and just tell him that your card is affected or potentially affected and recall it. Like, that's what I would expect. Otherwise, that's not fair customer treatment. You can let me know what you think about this behavior, but I would expect more instead of letting the customer do their job. All right, that's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.